The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Benny Hinn is coming to Detroit. He invites you to join him to hear the life-changing Word of God, experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in worship, and witness Jesus' miraculous healing power. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus is good, and He's healed me. Your life will be impacted at Greater Grace Temple on Thursday, August 8th at 7 p.m. and Friday, August 9th at 10 and 7. Call or go online for more information. He'll see you there. Time, there is never enough. In fact, time is running out. Dangers have never been so high and our time has never been so limited. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. I can guarantee you, you are going to enjoy this program today. I know you enjoy most, but I'll tell you what, you're going to enjoy today. Bishop Bloomer is with me on This Is Your Day, and I am believing God with you that this is your day for a miracle. I love having Bishop Bloomer because he is different, refreshing, exciting. Every time he comes, we talk about things that people really like to hear us talk about. Now, today you're going to talk about Warfare College, Warfare College. Today, I mean, that's quite a, quite a name. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life starting right now. And by the way, you look good, by the way. Thank God well, for that, well, huh? Well, well, thank you. It must be the juice Well, we've been already talking about things, you know, that are quite interesting. Like, you know, curses that go on from generation to generation, which, of course, I believe, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they can't really be, be cursed and so on. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are living in the flesh that sadly seem to have problems. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once saved, can you always be saved? I mean, you, were t you and I were talking about all this stuff earlier. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, well, but go we'll, ahead. Let's talk about we'll, the book. We'll talk about warfare ecology, okay. which is the science of or the exposing the witching craft. Uh, the question is, is that uh, do we believe that witchcraft is alive and well in America, well, and, of I, course it and is. I believe it is, and I believe it's alive in in in, in, in the media. Uh, it's alive in a lot of a lot, a lot of churches. But we're practicing. doing this program today, so God's precious people know what's going on. That you be protected. Our whole aim is that you and your families be protected. That's why we need the blood of Jesus to be applied on our lives daily. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. I believe with all of my heart that if we put our guard down, we're in trouble. Many years ago when I lived in Orlando, there's a, a, a little town called Casadega outside mm -hmm. Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. And a group of witches put a curse on me. And uh, I did not know. You. Yeah, yeah, they mm -hmm. did. And I got sick. I got sick with a very bad cold and they sent me a message. Mm -hmm. They said, so the governor, they called me the governor, so the governor is sick we hear. And Sue and I realized it's because we had not done what we ourselves should have been doing as Christians. This is back 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I learned through that. So I applied the blood on me, and it broke. Wow. So if you miss applying the blood on your life daily, the devil can hit you. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, all this about, you know, stick and stones may, may break my bones. No, no. The words that are spoken against us I have power. Have power. Have power. That's why we need to protect. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will kill you. Well, exactly they will. And words that's the that's why we're we're talking today, because we want you to know. Look, look, the word of God says, No weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that will arise against thee in judgment, and here's the deal, thou shalt condemn. Wow. You have to condemn it. If you don't condemn it, it will it, rise against it, you, and you, it, got and it, will it, prosper. you got it. Yes. If you don't condemn it, Audibly, yes. it will come to pass. Yes. I think often God gives us dreams to protect us from what's coming to us, and we cannot miss it. Mm -hmm. I remember Norval Hayes saying years ago that often God will speak to us in dreams or when we're about to fall asleep, and if we do not break it in prayer, it will come on yes. us. Yes. And God will, will actually show us good and bad. In other words, mm -hmm. if something good is coming, 
and we pray, it will come. Yes. If something bad is coming and we pray, we can stop it. Stop it, yes. If we don't pray, it will come. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, well, these well, powers out there are really yeah. quite well, in, real. In terms of generational curses, because you don't find the word generational curses in the Bible, but uh, in terms of generational curses, I can track certain things back. My dad uh, dropped out of school in the 10th grade and he couldn't read. I dropped out of school in the ninth grade, couldn't read. I learned how to read 15 years ago. My son dropped out of school in the 10th grade. This, this, this Why do you think it cycle. happens to a Christian, though? Why do I think it happens to a Christian? Yeah. Because a Christian don't properly appropriate the Word of God like you just okay, okay. That's, what yeah. like, That's what I like, Bishop. That's what I like, brother, there you go. There you because, you see, with me is, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes. Okay, but if we don't do our job, yes. then we're in trouble. Yeah. Whom the Son set free, let's play with the words a little bit. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Okay. Indeed. Okay, indeed, correct. What? Indeed. In their deeds. I said, let's play with the word. I'm, I'm listening to you. Indeed. Okay. And so if God has set me free, then my actions are to exemplify that freedom. Exactly. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. But often he's not there. He pulls away because of sin in our lives. And that's when trouble comes. Well, the reason why most uh, Christians are bound is because they're bound by what they hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, if you have an idiot preaching things to you and you begin <laughs> to believe those things, okay, then those things right. come upon you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Much of what we believe in Christendom, somebody got it from somebody, got it from somebody, got it from somebody that couldn't read. It's the choices we make in life. You know, if we choose to live righteously, nothing can touch us. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, you know, because of weakness, blah, 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 whatever, we're not, you know, we're but, not able to. But you opened up a door to talk about curses and how witches sent something to you. Uh, my grandmother was a witch, and she operated in witchcraft, but they were pastors of a church. And when women would have problems with their husbands, they went to my grandmother. Whoa, 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 wait. Who was pastors? My, my, my grandmother and my grandfather. Who were in they, witchcraft? My grandmother was in witchcraft, not my grandfather. Okay, but and she, she was she the wife of the him. pastor? She was the wife of the pastor. Wait, wait. The wife of a pastor yeah. was in witchcraft. Was operating in witchcraft. And, and many prayer warriors. I never heard that part, Well, by well the way. many prayer warriors in our churches are operating in witchcraft. They call them intercessors, but they operate in witchcraft. I believe that. All right? Yeah. A spirit of manipulation, intimidation, manipulation, domination, that spirit of Jezebel. And the scripture talks about the spirit of Jezebel in Revelation chapter number two. And we associate the Jezebel from Revelation two to the Jezebel of, of, of Second Kings, where we think it's the same person and it's not. The spirit of Jezebel, we say, well, the spirit of Jezebel is a controlling spirit. Well, the Bible says that the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of self-appointment. They say, for you allowed that woman who called herself a prophetess to preach and to seduce my servants. I was about to ask you what that is, because even though I know I like, you know, people to hear it. Yes. That's powerful. Yes. One who appoints themselves. Appoints themselves. And we have so many people who are never anointed, uh, never consecrated, and they've appointed themselves, and they're out there preaching this false doctrine. And faith coming by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. The more you hear it, you, be, you begin to believe it. Uh, uh, amongst the African-American people, there, there's a little saying. They say, Grandma said, don't you pull that mole on your neck, because if you pull that mole on your neck, I can hear them screaming all over America, you're going to bleed to death. You're not going to bleed to death if you pull the mole on your neck. But Grandma didn't want you to play with that mole. So she told you something, and we keep on hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it. Now we believe that a main artery is attached to a mole <laughs> on your neck. Okay. And so when my mole started getting and getting ready to fall off, I took a Band-Aid and put it on because I didn't want it to come off. I didn't want to bleed to death. <laughs> Faith coming it. by hearing, yeah, exactly. and by hearing, and by hearing, by hearing. And uh, time plus time equals influence. So the person that you're around... Well, well stop. You, you, you're saying so much so fast. Yes. Time, time plus, plus time... time Equals, equals influence. Boy, that's a, the, the person you spend powerful. most of your time with will influence Man, you powerful. the most. Yeah, you and bet. so we have these people in our churches who are supposed to be intercessors, who are supposed to be interceding on behalf of the people. Now, I have a, 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 a revelation on an intercessor. Uh, you ask the intercessor. I want to hear it. You ask, him, gonna, <laughs> you ask the intercessor, what did you do? I said, well, I pray for Pastor Benny. I'm his I intercessor. Some, I, pray. Man, I had some weirdos yeah. in our church in Orlando yeah. who called themselves intercessors. Uh -huh. they, they were some of the Biggest yeah. troublemakers. That's right. And, and, and they, they're intercessors, right? The intercessors don't pray for people. Intercessors prays as the person, okay, yeah. not for the person. You're right. Okay. And so... 
a lot of the ones I had used to, <laughs> used to pray against people. They pray against you. Those were witches. Exactly. Self-appointed individuals. And they would pray against one day. I had to go and stop them. I said, yes. stop. Come on, well, this is not in the Bible. It's crazy. Yes. And they get all these visions and all these dreams. Oh, and they yeah. have too little meetings them. over <laughs> too on Too many the, visions yeah, and yeah, dreams. Yeah, too many visions and dreams. God and told me this and God, God told, me, told me that. <laughs> A spirit of manipulation. Religious spirit. A religious, demonic spirit that many people are under right now. There are folks who are saying, you know, they can't leave a church because if they leave the church, they're cursed because they, because they, they, they're assigned to a person. Uh, they are, I call them uh, parking lot prophets and bathroom uh, evangelists that are going behind the scenes doing all these different types of things. In the book, Warfare Ecology... It Why did you write this book? I wrote it because there's a lot of crazy people in the body of Christ <laughs> that is doing a lot of foolishness at the close of the hour. We're coming closer and closer to the to the closing of the hour, to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and these spirits are really, really coming up right now. We, 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 we live so, in dangerous So what, what, what do we need to do to protect ourselves? Well, first thing, we need to get into the Bible and understand that the, the Word of How God... How true that is. The Word of God is... Is 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 the is all and ends all of all things, and people continue to quote things to us that's not necessarily in the Bible. I don't know what your religious background is, but I come from uh, old fashioned Greek Orthodox and Catholic. Greek Orthodox and Catholic. Yeah, I, I so you wasn't burdened up, with the. Stuff. I was brought up in a Catholic school, uh -huh. but Greek Orthodox home. Wow. Okay. So you wasn't brought up with the uh, Pentecostal I trappings no that I was idea brought up with. What, that if a woman wore no, pants, she was no, going to hell. None of that. And if she wore God, lipstick, she no, would... You, I, uh, so you don't know not, any of those kinds. None of that. Well, no. many of the people are bound by those things. And so we, we're into soundbite ministry, where a person says, Deuteronomy 22 and 5 says, For a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. So the whole church shouts out, Don't wear pants. Or let a woman keep her silent in the church, for she's not permitted to speak. They say, No women preaches. Or let a woman that pray if a prophesy with a head uncovered, uh, dishonor the head. That means that you have to go to church and put a hat on. All of these misconceptions, warfare ecology uh, goes after those myths and misconceptions and breaks those yokes so that God's people can walk let's, in freedom. Let, let, let's go back because you talk about the Tower of Babel. Why, why would you bring that into this book? Well, the Tower of Babel talks about this, this, this great king who was building this tower up to the heavens. Mm -hmm. And it really, really was this huge skyscraper that was built up to the heavens where his priests and his, uh, uh, they can go and they can study the stars and, and, and worship the, the, the several gods that was up there. The Lord came down to see the building of this temple and found out that the people were of one mind and of one heart. And he said, pray to let us go down and confuse their language, lest they come up here, lest they come up here and be as, as, as us. So God goes down and he uses tongues to disperse the, uh, the, the, that crowd of people and to create nations. Well, thousands of years later, he comes back to a tower, which is the upper room, where there's 120 men sitting in an upper room. And women. And women. Yeah. Yes, 120 men and that's women. Not, that's not getting in trouble. <laughs> that's not getting trouble. Please. Forgive us. The ladies us. were there, too, of course. <laughs> right, right. In Jesus' name. And um, he goes there, and you know, on the Tower of Babel, he uses tongues to disperse the nation. And at Pentecost, he uses tongues to bring them back. Correct. And so that's why this story of the Tower of Babel is written in the book, The Tale of Two Cities. And it's not Charles Dickens' tale of two cities, the worst of times was the best of times, but this is how that God uses his spirit to draw and his spirit to disperse. Now talk to me about Satan's agenda behind why uh, there's programs uh, you know, about psychics and all this stuff on, on TV. Well, Satan... They, you know, and, and Christians, you know, some of them think it's... It's okay. It's, it's very, very dangerous. That, that what's okay? To deal you know, with some Christians believe it's it's okay to watch those programs. About the, the psychics. Psychics. Yeah. But, well, necromances, the, the, the Bible calls it, or one that uh, would, would uh, gaze into a glass, stargazes, and, uh, and, and one that uses dividing rods and all these kind of things that's in the book of, of, of Isaiah. Uh, folks that are into enchantments and speaking to Listen, the dead. Listen, there's, there's, there's five things that attract demons mm -hmm. in the Bible mm -hmm. that we, we, we read about. And we must understand the dangers when we open our lives up, demons come in and destroy us. Mm -hmm. in, in, in Judges 7 and 8, remember the story of Ahan. Yeah. When Ahan went into Jericho and he took a Babylonian garment yes. and a wedge of gold yes. and hid it in his tent and so on. Yes. I did a whole study on this, mm -hmm. and I found that five things called demons. Uh -huh. Number one, sounds. Sounds. That's so every religion has a sound. Mm -hmm. Drum beats, or they make a sound, Tones, or they bells. or they repeat something, yes. whatever. 
The second is sight, mm -hmm. things people see. Mm -hmm. That's why you have images, you have pictures, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Number three, smell. Smells. Mm -hmm. You know, you have incense and such things. Yes. Uh, these are, ext now the first three are, are the most deadly mm -hmm. and dangerous. But there's two more that cause demons. Mm -hmm. one, one, one of them is demonic quietness, mm -hmm. meditation. Mm -hmm. You know, and people get into yoga mm -hmm. and get into mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. and do all. This also attracts devils. Mm -hmm. It's very, very serious. Mm -hmm. and, and also objects. Wow. Dif dif different Fetishes, objects. Fetishes, different things, yes. Huh? Fetishes and yeah, 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 yeah. dolls and stuff. Whatever, like mm -hmm. yeah. And people must understand the danger that is in, you know, clearly printed in Scripture. Yes. That bring devils. I believe you 100% because I just got finished praying for a woman who had multiple miscarriages. Well, a few years ago, she had multiple miscarriages, and I thought that miscarriages would has got to be something demonic. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the scripture says. And she was having these miscarriages, and I went to her house to pray for her, and she had all these dolls that, had, that she had gathered together from these African nations. And one doll, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, no, but I was ahead. looking into the cabinet. It looked as if the doll was looking back at me. And I pulled the doll out and, and I set the doll down and the doll was a doll with a backpack on and a lady was carrying the baby in the backpack on, on, in the doll. I considered the doll and there was this little writing on the inside. A voodoo person had given her this doll and at the bottom of it was a little slit in it and a, uh, and, and, and a curse that had been written folded up in a little piece of paper mm. that whoever had the possession of this doll would not be able to carry babies. Listen, it's the not curse just, was on that doll. It's not just dolls. My mom and dad, I prayed for three years that they would be saved. Nothing happened. And we're talking about also objects like books, yes. magazines, whatever, yes. tapes. My daddy used to have a hubbly bubbly. You know what a hubbly bubbly is? You you smoke it and the and the water bubbles, you know. Hookah. And the hookah, yeah. They put the little tobacco on top. Yes. Which it's it's called in our language hubbly bubbly. Hubbly whatever. bubbly. Whatever. It's yeah. called some things here in America. It's called hookah, whatever. Hookah and stuff. Yeah. And blunt and all the other things. And involved. and he emptied it of the water and he put some rocks on the bottom and a little red book. I'll never forget that. Uh, sorry, black book on the bottom. The Lord spoke to me before their salvation. I prayed nothing happened because I believe little objects like this or books can keep demons in a house wow. and can keep people blind from the gospel. And, and the Lord said, burn it. I took that book out and burnt it in the fireplace. The shock is to me anyways, it didn't burn. It would, mm. it would not burn. It was in the fire. The fire was on and the book would not burn. And finally, I got angry. And I knew this was demonic. I said, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And when I did, I heard screams. <clears throat> and then it burned. The next day, my parents got saved. Wow. It, it just broke the bond. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Imagine through a little book. I was on TBN one time. Never forget this as long as I live. This was back in mid-70s. I said, there's a man watching me in Phoenix, Arizona, who has got cancer. And the reason you have cancer is because there's a book in your library mm. about demons, and I even told him the color and so on. He called in while I was on live with, you know, Paula Jan Crouch, mm. and said, my God, yes, I have a book, and it's da 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 I said, burn it now, and when he burned it, he, he, he was healed on the spot. Objects. Yeah. Now, not all cancers are demonic. Mm -hmm. In that case, it was. Wow. And so you're talking about a very hot subject of, and people don't understand the dangers when they let, you know, you have a book, you have a magazine, a, a DVD, what, whatever. Who knows? Maybe that's why we're doing this, this program now. Maybe there's something in your home that's there that needs to be destroyed. Otherwise, demons will come back. Yes. And remember what Matthew 12 talks about, how demons come back. They come back. They come back. They, they see, and bring more with them. And, so and bring more with them. You, they'll, they'll be you exercise and kick them out, and they go find your cousin and your great cousin, <laughs> your other uncle, and the one who has a, a skeleton key. <laughs> let's 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 talk about territorial spirits. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that in your book? I um I think that a uh, America is uh, dealing with a lot of territorial spirits. Uh, in Mark's Gospel, chapter number five, when the when the demon, when the demoniac is confronted by Jesus, the spirit speaks up and he says, "We pray that thou send us not out of the country, right. but give us leeway into the swine." They didn't care about leaving the man or the swine. They wanted to stay in the country. They wanted to stay in the area. Many times we are, we cast out spirits 
and we get it, the spirit out of a person, but it stays in that area. You know, those demons did, did not want to go back in the pit. Right. Because that pit is one of the five worlds. Yes. That are below us. Right. Yeah. So, but you're saying. But they wanted to stay in stay the area. Right. Stay, stay in the area. And so that's where I get the whole territorial teaching from. There, there, there's, there's places all, all across America where you drive and you'll see when you turn a curve, they call it dark man's or dead man's curve. And you go around a curve and you see that there's this little uh, makeshift memorial. And every year, uh, almost to the date, uh, a, a truck comes around and kills a person. It's, it's, it's a spot where accidents continue to happen wow. over and over and over again where curses must be broken. We have one of those in Durham, North Carolina, across the street from the uh, Piedmont Bank, where every single year a kid between the ages of 12 and 19 for almost a nine-year period of time, there was an accident there, riding a bicycle and a truck or a car comes and, and takes them out. Nine years in a row till we had a prayer visual over there in that area, broke that curse, and it's been, I know, at least... 12 years where there's been no accidents there at all. I believe that there are territories that demonic forces go after and take over. How do you break them? You break them by confessing the word of God over it. We have authority. God has given us dominion and authority. And every place the soles of our feet shall tread, we shall step up on school. What do you believe about, about the son of the cross? I mean, you know, a lot of people in the Catholic Church and other churches believe that, that the cross has power well, to drive demons out. What do you think? I, I'm not into carrying a lot of things that you fling and water that you sling and whatever. I believe in the power of the Word of well, God. Well, of course, I do too. I'm yes. just asking you. Yes. What do you, do you believe in the symbol of the cross and so on? Yes or no? I, I believe in the cross. Do I believe in the symbol of the cross as what? Because I've seen some of the biggest devils walking around <laughs> with a cross on their neck or a cross choker. <laughs> One lady was so mean and evil, but she had crosses on her I earrings. Know, I know. I'm just asking. <laughs> I just, you know, I want to get your opinion because you're he's such a fascinating man. But anyway, okay, the intervention of angels. I believe that there are angels all around us. And I believe that God, you know, we had this one time I was on the program with you and we had this discussion that angels are not only, the angels are messages and messengers of God. Right. And uh, I believe that God sends his angels, his guiding angels, his um, uh, angels with mighty swords, angels that fight for us, angels that protect us. And I, be I, I believe that uh, there are angels in this room right now. There are folks who are watching that when this program came on, your room filled up with angels because of the demonic oppression that you've been dealing with. Those angels are there waiting for us to release the anointing that will destroy and break the yokes. Okay, in now their listen, lives. We're, we're, we're almost out of time, but I do want to ask you about the horned god of death. Uh, what do you mean by that? I believe that there's a spirit of death and murder. And, and I don't want to get you in trouble or your program in trouble, but I believe that there's a spirit of death and murder over our young people and particularly over African Americans in this nation that is going on right now. A spirit of death and murder. And it has nothing to do with the Trayvon Martin case or the nothing. There's a spirit of death and When did murder. that start and how, do, how would you stop it? Um, we, we, definitely, we definitely have to uh, speak to it. We have, we, we have to speak to death, we have to train, we have to uh, teach our children about life and the value of life and the importance of life. We have to stop the nonsense of black and white and brown. We got, we got to stop all that nonsense and understand that we have a serious spiritual problem in the world and his name is Satan, Belzebub, Lucifer. Hmm. And I truly, truly believe that. And how do we overcome all that? By confronting the devil. And the devil has to be confronted. And when God's people come together in prayer, in fellowship, through fasting and praying, those yokes are broken Absolutely. and destroyed. And that's the key, is seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot to talk about. One program, we can't cover it all. But you, you have a whole book on this. And you deal with all this and much more. Why, why did you write this book? Yeah, because, you know, I, I used to be possessed by demons. And then after I got saved, I had serious demonic issues. See, you're looking at me funny, and we only got a second, so let me say this. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> I'm not looking at, at, at you funny. I'm just amazed <laughs> you, by you. you, 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 you it's, 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 it, it, it is possible to have possession of the car 
and the bank still has the title to it. I get you. But you wrote this book for what purpose? To help people come out of bondage? Help people come out of bondage and understand that Christ, God, has the title to my life, even though from time to time Satan might have possession of my body and my acts. Make sure to get, in fact, you got two books. So this is the book, this is like and what? It's a, it's a workbook because when you start getting free, you're going to need to be able to journal and write down your day of breakthrough okay. and both, your day of freedom. Both books for a gift of $35. So it's call the number on the screen. It's a good that's, deal. that's a good deal, yeah. It's a good deal. Make sure to call the number on the screen right now and get these two books or go on our website, uh, benhin.org, or, of course, you can just write for them, Post Office Box 16, 2000, 2000 Irving, Texas. Can we pray over these needs quickly before we say bye? You pray, sir. Father, we thank you that today yokes are being broken and destroyed in Amen. the lives Amen. of your people. Yes, Supernaturally, Lord. we yes, thank Lord. you that today is the beginning of the rest of your life starting now. Amen. And Father, we, we stretch our hands in faith and pray that every person watching today will be delivered and made whole. Heal your people, not only physically today, but also emotionally, spiritually. Bring total health and total restoration. We rebuke sickness, disease, and bondage. In Jesus' mighty name, and for your glory, Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Keep calling. And by the way, I'm going to Israel this October, the end of October. It's going to be a very powerful trip. A lot of people are signing up. Seats are filling fast. So please don't wait till the last minute. Call today the number on the screen and come to the Holy Land. I promise you this. Truly, truly, your life will be changed and transformed in Israel. And yes, so you'll see today, help me take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And for those that will sow regularly each month, I will be sending you as my thank you, the Bible verse by verse. I teach it myself. Wow. I sit and teach you the Bible verse by verse. And every month you'll get a CD just to say thank you. And plus your life will be enriched. So you send an offering and you receive back a treasure. Bye-bye. Love you. Pastor Benny Hinn needs your help to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Your generous gift will be an investment into the lives of men, women, and children who are desperate for spiritual, physical, and emotional miracles. For your gift of any amount, Pastor Benny will say thank you with a portion of his audio series in which he teaches verse by verse through the Bible. This rich material will be a treasure which will enhance your spiritual growth. Call, write, or give online today. Pastor Benny Hinn will be in Detroit, Michigan tonight at 7 to conduct a great miracle service at Greater Grace Temple with two more services scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. And he'll return to Europe later this month for services in England, Wales, Spain, France, and Switzerland. For more information on these and other events, please visit the ministry website at www.bennyhen.org. Pastor Benny also invites you to join him for a life-changing visit to the Holy Land, October 29th through November 7th. You'll walk where Jesus walked and experience the presence of the Holy Spirit as the Bible comes alive to you in a brand new way. Download a brochure today or call for more information. Visit Israel. You'll never be the same.